Hey everyone, so before I go full bin, there is one project or technology that I want to cover that requires me to use VS Code. And that's going to be using NX, which is a mono repo tool that manages a, well, a mono repo. And what a mono repo is, is that it's multiple different projects that you can share code in between. And because of that, it's usually in the same programming language. So because I'm a full stack developer, it'll be TypeScript. And it's a good thing too, because NX has first class support for TypeScript. The backend framework of choice is going to be NestJS. So I'm going to go back to that. As for the fun, it's open to anything pretty much. So we'll see where we go with it. And the project that we're going to do is the Space Explorer tutorial app from Apollo, which looks a little bit like this. It's going to hit the SpaceX API where we generate a GraphQL version of the REST API. And the idea of the app is kind of like an Airbnb for space travel in a way. So as a user, you're going to see all the possible launches and then you get to book which launch you want to take, essentially taking that launch to, to space, which is, a, which is a cute idea. Now, if you do remember, I started this a while back, but I never quite finished it just because I kind of got burnt out. But we're going to try to do this again. This time we're going to be using NX and I've already updated the name of the GitHub repo. And also fun fact, I'm going to go into the forks here. There was a spelling mistake that haunted me for a while. So I spelled Explorer wrong. So I fixed that this time. And also the original next or nest JS code is still available. There's just going to be under these tags where it's a snapshot of whatever that video is. Okay. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to just need to grab this command here and go to our terminal and paste that in. So it's going to be npx create nx workspace. And this is an interactive command line interface. So we don't need to provide it a name or anything. It's going to ask us with some prompts like this one. So the workspace name is our entire mono repo structure, and that's going to be space explorer. And instead of starting with empty, we're going to go with a nest.js. So yes, we're going to start from scratch and like do everything, but this video is mostly going to be set up and this prompt saying application name, this is referring to just the nest.js portion. So that'll be server. And no, I will not use the cloud for this. And we're going to wait until that downloads and installs everything before we go further. Okay, so everything's installed and updated. So let's go ahead and open this up in VS Code and not Vim. Also imagine if we open this in Vim, there's just so much stuff. So let's explore a little bit. Obviously all of these dot files are just for configuration. We have our package JSON as expected. We also have this workspace.json and this is a schematic of all of the other projects within this app. So right now it's only server. And then if we go in, we'll see all the possible commands. So we have serve, lint, test, and those we can run there in the command line. And then we also have a default project, which, which will come into play when we don't provide the application name that we want to run the command against. We also have a couple of directories here. Tools is going to be for more schematics if we end up making more. Libs is going to be all the shared code that we're going to create. So we're going to create some libraries and hopefully something that we can share between our front end and our back end. Those are probably going to be the types. Apps here is going to hold all of our projects. So each project is going to have its own directory. And right now we'll have server, which is a Nest.js application. So in here, nothing too crazy. We have our normal main entry point, And then we also have app where you see our module controllers and services. Okay. And then I also want to go over the main reason why you we're using VS code for this application. And that's because of this, this is the NX console. So NX workspace by default uses a modified angular schematic to run all the command lines. But there are a lot of commands. So this UI kind of simplifies it in a way where we can just press a bunch of buttons. So the first one we could run is serve and that's just running the normal serve command to start our server. But that's not the fancy part. The fancy part is that it brings up this little web view with all the possible options that we can click on and define. And we'll play around more with this a little later. The serve command is not the one that I'm mostly too concerned with. It's more about the generate command. And that has to do with my experiences with Angular. Sometimes I would generate a component and it goes in the wrong directory. So it's nice to have here. So then we could be a little more fine tuned at where things go. And I probably should open up the marketplace to show you what the extension page actually looks like. So that's this right here. It'll look a little bit like this and your VS code might not be transparent. So you might actually see this image. 
All right, let's start setting things up. So I'm gonna go back to my GitHub repo because there's two files that we're gonna need. And it's gonna be this Docker Compose file as well as a sample.env. The Docker Compose file is gonna be important because we actually need a database. And we'll use Docker to create a Postgres database. And then we'll also need the sample env. I'm not gonna really make any changes here because these environment variables will be good to go. Now, if we open up our server, there's a directory called environments, and this is not normally part of the Nest.js scaffolding. This is kind of unique to NX, and it's also kind of inspired by Angular in a way. So we have two files here, the environment and then environment.prod. And depending on what flags we give to our command line interface to start the server, it'll switch up between which file it's gonna serve as just environment. The first property is gonna basically say whether or not it's production. But here we're gonna add the rest of our environment variables into a little configuration object. So we can access our .env file by using process.env and assign it to properties of similar names. So we'll add another one for the JWT secret. And we're gonna come back to this because we need to set up the database first. So for that, let's install packages that includes the Postgres driver, Typeform, and Nest.js Typeform. And while we're here, I'm also looking at the Nest.js config module as well. So with that, let's open up our app.module, which is this one. And let's first do the config module. So that'll be a config module where we need to use the for root method to add some configuration. We're gonna set this to be global. And then we also want to load that environment file. So we could add that in here. And the reason why this is mad is because the config module is not expecting an object. It's expecting a function that returns an object. So back in environment, we'll just have to turn this into a thump and make sure you wrap the curlies with friends. And that'll fix that small issue. Another note about the app module is that make sure that you're getting the environment from the one without the suffix and not the one that says dot broad. Now let's go back to the environment file so that we could set up our database configuration. This is also going to be a function. And this time it's going to take in all the entities and it'll return us the type one module options. These first, was that six properties is all going to be based on our database configuration. So we're using Postgres where you know, the default port is 5432. And then all the other options are based on our environment variables. So we're doing DB host, username, password, and database. And then we'll send in the entities at the very bottom. And this way, the environment can be loaded asynchronously, so somewhat dynamically. And then these two options are optional. Synchronize would just mean that it'll auto-migrate, so we don't have to worry about migrations. And then logging will just send all the SQL queries to the logs, so we can read it in our terminal. Now that we have our database configuration ready, let's go ahead and create a new class called database.config.ts. Now this database config is just gonna handle the configuration of our Postgres database. We're gonna inject the config service so we have access to our environment file. And that way this can implement the type one module options, which means we need to make a method here called create type one options that will return us the type one options. And I made a mistake. This is actually the options factory that it implements. But all it needs to do is call the config service, get that database property, and if you remember, that property is a function. So we need to open up another set of parens here to give it the arguments. Now it's expecting an array of entities, but since we don't have any at the moment, we'll just send it an empty array. And that's all we need for this class. So let's go back to our app module to, or to add this. So that would be type or module, and we're gonna use for root async as the configuration method. And all we need to do is call use class and provide it that class that we created, so database config. We're also gonna to need to add an imports to the config module so it has access to our environment that's been loaded. And then I wanna make one last change, and this is gonna be in the main entry file function, bootstrap function, let's get rid of that. So right here, instead of this port variable, I wanna get the exact port from our environment. And we get the config service here from accessing the app that's created by the nest factory. And that way we could replace this port with config.get port. And remember this name here refers to the property inside of our environment variable. Now with all of that, we will use Docker to create our database. 
and we can actually run this application, which you can use the NX command line interface to say NX serve and then the application name, which for us is server, or you could say server serve. And this is where the application name comes first and then it's a colon followed by the command. And what we're looking for here is that the server starts and everything is totally okay. Nothing breaks. We also have the type form logs coming here, which is nice. And there is already an app controller. So if we look in here, it's going to a global prefix of API. So we go ahead and check it. And this is, this is what's kind of called as a health check. It's an endpoint that doesn't really do anything other than letting you know that the server is alive. So, so far our setup's doing pretty good. Let's go ahead and shut down the server. And there's one last thing I want to set up before we close out the video. So let's go to the documentation for Nest.js and go down to GraphQL quick start because I would need to install all of these things as we're going to set up the GraphQL portion of Nest.js or our server. So that'll be a yarn, add, and paste in those dependencies. Now that we have that installed, there's also another thing that we need to do before we touch the app module. So I'm going to open up our NX server and we're going to generate a library. So there's a couple options here. Um, I want a workspace library because I want one that's framework agnostic. This is going to be for our GraphQL schemas and everything. So inside this little web view, I think all I need to do is type in GraphQL. The integrated terminal down here will show a little dry run, which means it'll show what is going to be generated. What I'm looking for is lib slash GraphQL. So this doesn't highlight very well, but that's okay. And since that's good, I'm going to click run. All right, it ran perfect. Let's get rid of all this extra junk. And I want to show something. So in the very top level of our application, there's a tsconfig.base JSON. And it added an alias here to space explorer slash GraphQL. So that's going to be our library. And we can reference it as this in our imports. So as far as TypeScript is concerned, this is the same as this path, lib slash GraphQL slash source slash index. Speaking of which, that library is right here, and there's all the other files that make it work. And I'm going to open up index.ts here, and I will export something that will make sense a little later. So this is a variable called libpath. It's a constant, and all it is is a string of the path to get to this specific library or the specific directory. That'll make more sense a little later. And also while I'm here, I'm going to make a new directory called schemas. And those two are just things we need because we're going to automatically generate some stuff. So with all of that set up, now we can open up our app module and add in the GraphQL module. This is also going to need a for root method for configuration. Before we go there, let's import the node path module to get join as well as the libpath from our library. We're going to need both of that to create a reference to that library. And that will be kind of part of the configuration of the GraphQL module. So the two things we need here is type paths and type definitions. This GraphQL server is schema first, so it needs to read the GraphQL file types, which we're putting in that library for all those schemas. But within that library, we also want to generate a TypeScript's type definition for all the schemas. And that's done with this property. So this path is going to put all the definitions in a file called GraphQL.ts every time the server is run. All right, so I'm going to call it the video here and we're going to pick up in the next video where we actually start adding code to this project. So I'll see you next time.